Welcome back to Sporn Sprout. In this video, I'm going to show you how I cloned enoki and shiitake mushrooms from the grocery store. I recommend working in front of a laminar flow hood or inside of a still air box to reduce the risk of contamination. The first step is to take a sterile tissue sample from inside of the mushroom and transfer it to an agar plate. I recommend using multiple agar plates so that you have better chances. I will leave a link in the description to a video that I made on how to make your own agar plates. The top of the enoki mushroom cap is cut away and then a flame sterilized scalpel is used to extract a piece of sterile tissue from inside of the cap. The shiitake mushrooms are much easier to clone because they are thicker, so we just cut it in half and take a piece right from the middle. After the transfers are complete, the agar plates are wrapped in parafilm. After only a few days at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the tissue transfer becomes fuzzy as it starts growing outward. After a few more days, the plate should be grown out enough for you to decide whether or not you need to take new transfers because of the presence of contamination, or you can move on to the next step. From here you have many options for how you want to expand this mycelium. In this video I will be taking a wedge from these agar plates and adding it to liquid culture. scalpel is flame sterilized and then it is used to cut a wedge from the agar plate and then it is transferred to the liquid culture. I will leave a link in the description to a video I made on how to make your own liquid culture. The same process is used for the shiitake agar plate. The magnetic stir bar in the liquid culture helps to break up the wedge and redistribute the mycelium. The mycelium will replicate and grow over the next two weeks. The jars are kept at 75 degrees Fahrenheit and stirred every other day. The 
The next step is to inoculate sterilized grain with the liquid culture. I will leave a link in the description to a video I made on how to make your own sterilized rye grain. The injection ports are wiped down with isopropyl alcohol and then a sterile syringe and needle is used to extract the liquid culture and inoculate the rye grain. You can use 2 to 5 milliliters depending on how dry the grain is and how many pounds you're inoculating. Master liquid cultures can be stored at room temperature for up to 6 months or they can be wrapped in parafilm and refrigerated to preserve viability for longer. After 1 to 2 weeks at 75 degrees Fahrenheit you should start to see white patches of mycelium growing from your inoculation points. The grain spawn is broken up and mixed to redistribute the inoculation points, resulting in a faster colonization rate. After one to two more weeks, the grain spawn should be fully colonized. The grain spawn is broken up and added to a sterilized bag of mushroom substrate made up of hardwood fuel pellets and wheat bran. I will leave a link in the description to a video I made on how to make this substrate. Shiitake mushrooms specifically do not like high nutritious substrates, so just don't use master's mix when you're growing shiitakes. After about one week at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the substrate block should start to show signs of growth. After one to two more weeks, the substrate should be fully colonized. I am fruiting the enoki block first because the shiitake block will not be mature for another two months. 
the top of the enoki bag is cut off and it is placed inside of a fruiting chamber. After about one week, you should start to see the enoki mushrooms growing from the substrate. In order for the enoki mushrooms to grow taller, they require less light and less fresh air exchange. I placed this block outside in a shaded area for a much better second flush. A few weeks after the enoki mushrooms were harvested, the shiitake block is just now starting to brown. After another few weeks, the shiitake block is fully brown and mature, and at this point it is ready to be refrigerated overnight to cold shock it into fruiting. The shiitake block is now removed from the filter patch bag. Shiitake blocks are prone to premature pinning caused by excessive handling during colonization, so make sure not to touch the block until it is mature, and then go ahead and give it a few slaps to shock it into fruiting. The shiitake block is placed inside of a fruiting chamber at temperatures around 65 degrees. After only a couple days in the fruiting chamber, I can already see the shiitake pins forming all over the block. The phases that a shiitake block goes through make it a more confusing and difficult strain to grow but once you get the hang of it, it's really fascinating to watch all of these mushrooms growing off the block. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one.